Good afternoon. This is Leslie Evans from Net to Phone, and today we are going to look at the app.nettofone.com portal, where you can use this um, as your soft phone app, as well as for administrators, how to administer your um, company's um, profiles and call flows. So what I'm going to start doing is um, going through some of the basics of just the portal itself, and then we'll go into how you can manage and um, work with your call flows for your company. So um, everyone at this point in time should be able should have um, login credentials, which is your email address, um, and they logged into app.netophone.com. They put their email address in. And then if it was the first time, you would have put, um, forgot password, and then it would have sent you a new um, reset to your email address, and you would have reset your password, and then you can get in from there. So once you get in as an end user, there's a few things that end users want to do. You always do come up into your text box, your inbox. And over on the right, this is where you're going to do all of your managing as an end user. This is the dial pad. If you click on the dial pad, you can enter a number. You can type it in. You can use the keypad. Um, and once you, if you have already called it, you can pick on it and make a call. Once you make a call to an end user, um, first of all, calls will not work if you don't have a mic on your either pl plugged in headset or on your computer itself. So you've got to make sure that you have a mic, else they won't work and calls cannot come into you as well. I'm just going to hang up that call. This is your voicemail box. Your voicemail box, you can see their current voicemails that you haven't listened to. You can click on view, view all voicemails and see all of them. This is how do you can get to our support desk. You can either email them or call them. And this is how you can manage your profile. So as an administrator, you're going to be able to add, edit everyone's profile. This is your per personal profile that each of your users is going to be able to do. For this, I'm going to actually go over to the left. And we're going to click on the store option, which is our company. And when the company comes up, you're going to see it comes up to team members. This is where you're editing the profile as well. Over here on the pencils, how you can edit everyone's profile. And then we'll go through the rest of the um, menus on the left. So let's start off with our team member. We want to go edit someone. So if we pick Elizabeth Jones, you click on the pencil. The profile is going to come up with what you have programmed in currently. You can change avatars by just browsing files and grabbing it in here. Um, let's say you have company turnover. Someone has left the company and you want to change it to someone else's phone. This is where you're going to come in. You're going to change this name. So let's change this to, um, let's do this. Freddie. Johnson, you would change their email address because the email address is where the voicemail messages are going to go. So you would put the new email address in, and that's where their voicemails will go, and they'll also get transcribed. The service address should be the same, but if you do have remote employees, you can come in here and actually click down, scroll to the bottom, and you can add a new address. So if it was a, a remote employee, you can actually put this phone where they live time zone. Um, most people have the same time zone, so if this would change, this is where you come in and edit the time zone. And then you're just going to save. Once you hit save, you'll notice that the person has now come in, and they've taken over all the information that I had here for Elizabeth. Okay, so let's just go back in there and confirm it's all the information that we wanted. So I'm going to click the pencil again. You do have to save the new person on, on the first page and then go back in a second time. Okay, so in the company tab, this is what the, um, their local number is or, or what their number is assigned. Most people when you have company tur turnover isn't going to change this, but you can if you want. Same thing with extension. You're not going to change this, but if you wanted to, you absolutely can. You can type in any extension you want. Um, it will um, take it once you hit save, and that will be the new extension for that person. In a few minutes, I'll go over what the departments are. 
And I, what I have is this person was assigned to these departments. So anytime these departments were called or in a call flow, um, Elizabeth's phone was ringing. So now Freddie's phone is going to ring. If you want to make this person an administrator, you absolutely can do that. You just click on it and hit save. And you do, again, want to save everything on this page if you made any changes. And if you didn't, you can go on to the next tab. I did, but I don't, I'm not going to make the changes. Call option. This is a new employee, right? We just changed over from someone that left the company. You as an administrator do want to come in here and turn this to off. Before you turn it to off, you notice how that phone number didn't go away. You want to remove it from the call flow. Okay, and then you can turn it off. And now they have no call flow. You can, if you want to create a new call flow for this person, you can do ring both. Um, this is, um, ring both is, um, you know, the twinning option. This is the find me, follow me rule. You can always permanently move calls over to um, a forwarding only, so it never rings any phones. Let's just do the ring both. You could add phone number, you just put it in here. Click add, and now this number is going to work. Um, if anyone calls this extension, this number is also going to work. So a lot of our administrators will ask, what's the difference between call screening and incoming call ID? This is something that as an administrator you might want to know. So if you're forwarding calls to people's cell phones, um, there's a few things that they want to do. They'll say that I don't know if it's a company call or, or a personal call. So there's two things you can do. You can do incoming calling ID, which means what they're going to do is push the main company number or your number to your cell phone. So whenever you see your company number come across, you know it's a company call or a call. But you will not see the caller ID of the person calling into you. You only see your company number. The other one is call screening. If you do call screening, what happens is when you pick up the phone, so now you're going to see the person's on um, the person the person calling in's caller ID come up on your cell phone. And if you hit accept, it will um, once you pick up the phone, it will say, do you press one to accept, press two to reject. When you get that message, you obviously are going to remind you that it's a company call. You hit one, now you can professionally answer that phone. Hey, this is Leslie Evans from Net to Phone. How may I help you? Versus just saying hi. So that's the other option a lot of our users like to do. I think this is the more preferred one. And call recording. This is where you can come in and turn on people's phones to be recorded. The device tab allows you to go in and decide what caller ID you want to push out on your um, person's phone. So Freddie's number was not this. This is his number right here. I don't want to push that out. I really want to push out my company main number. You're going to have access to all the other numbers in the company except for ones that are assigned to specific users. And you can come in and grab that company number and now push that out when the calls are made from this phone. You can decide how many um, phone rings they have. And this WebRTC just allows them to have access to exactly what we're doing right here. You don't have to give people in your company access. You can turn it off. And voicemail allows you to come in and edit it. Now, remember, everything that I'm showing you, your end users have access to do it on their phones. But this is just somewhere, somewhere where you can come in and do it on the app. If you want to record a new greeting, you do that. You put the number in. It can be your company phone number calling your, your, your hardware, or it can be a cell phone, and it will call you. You can record it. So that's how you edit all of your team members in your company. You can come in and work with any of them that you want as an administrator. So the next thing we have a lot of our um, that, that a lot of the customers want to do is work with your your main numbers, and typically someone's main number is either going to one person, or maybe try one person and then go to many others. It's call flow, or you're going to an auto attendant. You have access to create your own ring groups and your own auto attendants. You can make as many as you want. So really, whatever you can come up with is what you can create. Before we go into the call flow, there's this one between it. It's called department. Department allows you to do many call flows. So if you have a, a department such as billing or customer support, maybe you define that department and you create it and you have a call flow for that department. So I have, and you can remove them as fast I and mean, as easy as um, you want. I was removing some of them, but let's go down to our customer support. Okay, um, in our customer support, you see how Freddie Johnson's in here? Because remember, I renamed Elizabeth to Freddie, so he got to stay in this group. Um, 
you can define who you want to be in this department. You can give them their own number. So now what happens is if I can push this number out for this group, people will call back in. And when they call back into this number, all four of these people's phones are going to ring. Internally, you can dial 3001 and all, pe all these phones are going to ring. So that's what a small department does is it allows you to access many people at once. You can create call options for this group. So when that main number is called or the extension is called, you can decide if you want to ring all members at the same time or maybe you want to ring one member at a time and, and um, create that, um, you know, first mark for five rings and all that. You can do that. So it's up to you how you want to do it. And then there's a voicemail option. So if they called that number specifically or that extension and nobody picked up, they're going to get this voicemail. The key to this voicemail is that if they left it, every somebody in the group is going to get that voicemail. All four people are going to receive the same voicemail. So it's something you do want to turn on. If you, do, if you turn it off, that means this department better be part of a ring group that ends up somewhere else. Okay. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's say we made that ring group. I turned off the billing or uh, the customer support um, voicemail. Now I have a ring group. And in that ring group, I can, let's just do our main ring group. Our main ring group, when people call in, it goes to the front desk. And I'll show you how easy it is to remove these things. And let's start anew. We're actually going to go to our customer support department that I just was looking at. Okay. It's going to ring them for four rings. And then after four rings, I'm going to go back to the customer support department. But now what I'm going to do is add their manager on because it wasn't ringing before. There it is. Let's grab um. Mr. Mario. Okay, and now it's ringing them for four rings. Now what happens if no one answers? I can actually send this to many different options. I can send them to an auto attendant that says you've reached customer support. We are currently busy helping other people. Um, please press one to leave a message. Please press um, five to continue to wait. And they can go back to this ring group, right? Um, we can do a hang up the call. We can add, we can forward it to an outside company. A lot of doctor's offices and dentist's offices have call services. So if no one didn't answer, it's going to bring it to their, their um, call service um, group. Or I can bring it to a single team members. Um, I'm going to pick them and I'm going to put it right in their voicemail. And it's going to go in their voicemail. And there's my ring group. Okay. So they're very easy to do. The key with ring groups and welcome menus is that you want to make sure it ends with something. A lot of people will call in and they'll go into a ring group and the ring group doesn't end anywhere. And ending in a call hang up unless you deliberately want to do that is not the way because nobody today will call a number and then the number will just hang up. Um, you want it to go somewhere. You want it to go into someone's voicemail box or you want to go to an auto attendant. So right here, if a call is not answered, and this, this feature does default to hang up call, you do want to help your, um, you know, come in and look at all your ring groups and make sure that they're not going to hang up because that's what the default is. Come back in and look at them and make them go to people's voicemail boxes or make them go to open auto attendance. Okay. There we go. Boom. And you can save it. So the next one we're going to is the auto attendant. So an auto attendant is a message that you may have um, when people call in. So companies go either way. They either go to a ring group where the phones are ringing for dirt, certain people. Then if no one answers, it might go to an auto attendant. And the other way is people call in and they automatically hit a message. And the message says, hey, you've reached ABC company. We're currently, please listen to the following menu um, to reach one of our people. And they may even say you, you can dial your extension at any time. Then it says, like, for billing, press 1. For customer support, press 2. These are the type of things that you can program on your own. We even have companies that will do, um, you reach ABC company. For English, press 1. For Spanish, press 2. And then they'll have two menus down here, Spanish and English. And they'll go through the exact same thing on those second menus. If you were doing something like that, you'd come into your first auto attendant. 
And let's just remove all these. And you'd only have these two. This would go to, um, you know, English. We don't have that one right here. So let's just go to sales. Phone. And this one and this, you know, for Spanish, press two. And you would press this one and you'd go to the um, auto attendant that says Spanish. I'll pick special. There we go. And then you hit save. And then you can edit your... Um, the um, Spanish and English menus. So then you'd go into the next one and you go in and edit it. So this doesn't have to be assigned a number because it's coming from another auto attendant. And now we can do our options. For billing department, press one. For customer support, press two. Um, for to repeat the menu, press um, nine. So the key to the auto attendant needs to be recorded. So you can have all these call flows however you want to. And if you see if they made no selections, it's gonna ring the front desk. We don't need to say that. And then all you're going to do is click on record greeting via phone. You would put the number in and it would call you and you can record it or you can upload the greeting. But this is how easy it is to do a greeting. Now you just follow your menu as you're talking. Hi, you've reached ABC company. Um, if you know your party's extension, you may dial it anytime. For billing, press one. For customer support, press two. If you'd like to repeat this menu, please press nine. Thank you. You're done with your recording and you save it. One of the things, I don't know if you're creating your own auto attendants or not, the customers never listen to messages until they hear what they want. So never say press for um, press one for billing because they heard the word billing and they forgot what number you pressed. So always say um, what you want to do and then give them the number to press. It'll make it easier on your people calling in. And then once you're all done, you again, like you said, I just hit save. So that is your welcome menu. So right now, as an administrator, you're going to be able to edit your team members. You can add departments as you want. Your departments will define themselves in ring groups or welcome menus if you want to use them. Phone numbers is just one area I want to show you. This phone numbers list shows you every single number that you have as a company and where they are pointing. Okay, so I have a lot of numbers pointing to people. And if you have any unassigned numbers, you can see they're at the bottom of the list. So you can use these numbers and point them to wherever you want. Maybe you want another number to customer success. You can absolutely do that. Um, but that's how that's all your numbers and where they're pointing. Devices, if you click on devices, it shows you all the phones that are registered and what their MAC addresses are to your um, company. So you can actually come up here and see which ones are up and um, running in live. Chat channel. The chat channel gives you the code that you need to put onto your web presence in order to um, create that um, that chat widget in, in your web. So this can be creative. A lot of people, you can come in and if you know your RGB color of your company, you can type it in or you can click on the rainbow and find the color that you like. Um, once you have it, you can change your code. Um, it can be anything. You can slay this interested in placing an order. Chat me now. And then person can start talking. Uh, we have a customer that wants to do this. They want to take orders online um, just by chatting, and they can do it because they don't have an order type feature. Um, have a question, chat me now. Once you've done that, the script will change down here. They copy the code, and then you can put it into your web browser, and you're up and running. Your company profile, this allows you to get into your company. This is what you, our, our billing department sees for you. This is where you are. You can actually put a time zone in and apply it to all team members if you want. On, on my company profile, I can't do that. I do have people out in the... Um, West Coast, so I got to keep that as um, not apply. And the terms and policies just gives you a copy of um, what you signed up on location. Okay, so that is where most of the admin is done. There's a few other areas you may want to look at is settings. And you can actually come up and um, upload a file for hold music. The hold music that you up here will be on everything that whenever you put someone on hold. So a lot of our customers want to upsell or they want to educate their their um, their customers. This is a great place to come in and to upload some music and um, some announcements. 
And always make sure your own customers stick here when you're upselling them or you're educating them on their products. So it's a great opportunity. And because it's so easy, you just hit browse file. You pick a file off your hard drive that you already put up there. And as soon as you hit save, it's now your new hold music. So we went over the bottom two. What I want to go over here is call history. So as an administrator, a lot of administrators need to get into seeing what the call history is. You can see, um, because I'm an administrator, I got mine and company. You can click on company and see all the calls that have come into your company for a time frame. The time frame is the billing cycle for the past month. You can generate a CSV file and you can then do pivot tables all you want if you want to download all this information. You can see voicemails. So these are all um, different voicemails for the company. Oh, those, those are mine, sorry. I don't think you can get into company. Voicemail. Voicemail, I think, is only yours. Oh, no, you can get in to see everyone's voicemails. If they aren't yours, I don't believe you can You can actually listen to them, though, but you can see what voicemails were done. You see how, um, um, Leslie, this is not, I can't get into that voicemail, but I could see how many voicemails we had as a company, which is good to see if people are calling and leaving messages. And then the recordings. Remember, I showed you on the team profile when you edit it, you can turn on recordings. If you have recordings turned on, then you can come in here and you can listen to the, your recordings. Again, at the company level, you can see all of them. I think I'm the only person that has their call recordings on, so it's just me at this point in time. So that's how you can get to all that. The other area that a lot of our administrators like to look at is the analytics. The analytics you can filter by um, today, seven days, month, or two weeks. Um, you can actually pick time frame up here. Okay, and once you pick your time frame, I'm just going to go with the same month. It will pull up the data, and you can actually look at your um, analytics. So you can get creative here. The analytics are by phone numbers, okay, um, and departments. So if you wanted to, you could have um, a phone number come in and do the exact same call flow as another phone number, but then you can actually pull out that phone number and what the analytics are. This just allows you to come in and see a very high level of what's going on in your company. Okay, and then a the dashboard just gives you a summary of everything that you have in your company in one viewpoint. You can see your team members, you can see your phone numbers, you can see your welcome menus. So you can see what you've created on one page and you don't have to go through um, many pages to see all your summary right here. So that is the overview of um, the app.netophone.com. I hope we gave you some information that allows you to um, administer your company and edit team members and anything else that you need to on your own. Of course, remember we have 24 by 7 support and you can reach out to them and ask them any question or have them support you and help you with any changes you have. Um, if you have any questions yourself, please just reach out to me. You're because you're on this webinar, you have my email. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. And if it's something specific, we can always jump on a separate call. I'll be more than happy to work through what you um, solutions you're looking at and making sure your solutions um, are functioning on your phones. So I hope you enjoy your phones. And if you ever have any questions, please reach out. Thanks for joining the call. Have a great day.